This video is going to be on graphing general angles in the coordinate plane. And now one thing we want to do um, is make sure to uh, let you know that this is going to only be uh, in degrees. Uh, there will be another video uh, regarding radians later. Uh, but for now, we're going to work only in degrees. So uh, the coordinate plane looks like this and is broken down into four quadrants. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And we start over on the right hand side uh, of <clears throat> the x axis on the positive x axis, and we start right here. That's hard to see. Um, let's use a different color. That's beautiful. All right, and so this is called the initial side. And right where that is, that's zero degrees. Okay, and then as you work around, you work around uh, in this direction. You work around in the counterclockwise direction when the angle is positive, uh, positive angles. And then when the angle is negative, you actually work in this direction from the initial side when there are negative angles. And the last thing you want to know is kind of how the coordinate plane is broken down. That's zero degrees here. This would be 90 degrees. And then half of a circle around is 180. That's the way I think of it. Then three quarters would be 270. And then all the way around, a full revolution like this makes one circle, which is 360 degrees. The neat thing is it can go around more than once. So uh, if it goes around a second time, then it's 720 degrees and so forth and so on. And so graphing an angle, you have the initial side always as the positive x-axis. And then you have the terminal side, which is where you want the angle to end. So let's say that we had an angle of, oh, I don't know, let's go with, um, let's go with, say we had uh, 200 degrees, All right? I would draw my coordinate plane, and then I would make my initial side at the positive x-axis, and then I would think about where is uh, 200 degrees in the coordinate plane according to my quadrant. So it's more than 180, so it's going to go past the second quadrant, and it might be right about there. And so I draw in the initial side, and that's how you would graph 200 degrees. So let's try a few that are maybe a little bit more difficult, and we'll see how that goes. So let's uh, say, let's graph... Um, let's go with 450 degrees, all right, 450 degrees. So you are going to draw your coordinate plane, and think about it this way. 450 is greater than 360, so you know it's going to go all the way around at least once. Now, if you want to figure out how much more it's going to continue, to spin, I would suggest that you take 450 and subtract it from 360. And if you do that with calculator in your head, that's 90 degrees. And so that means that this angle is going to continue for 90 more degrees and end up right there. And so we're going to draw in our terminal side, and there it is. What's interesting is that graph doesn't look any different uh, by positions of the initial side and the terminal side. Uh, if you would have graphed just 90 degrees itself, they would look very similar. Uh, but in this case, 450 goes all the way around and then to 90. And so that is 450 degrees. Let's try uh, one that's negative. So let's graph, right, uh, let's go with negative uh, 300 degrees. So you're going to draw your coordinate plane. And then you're going to put your initial side. And all negatives mean is go clockwise when you rotate. So clockwise is that direction. And so 300 degrees that direction. So not really negative, but 
the negative is talking about direction. So if I go one quarter of the quadrant, that is 90 degrees, then 180. So I'm at 180. If I go another quarter, that's 270. And so I need 30 more degrees. So we'd say that's about right there. And I draw my terminal side. And so that'd be negative 300 degrees, and it would end up in quadrant one. And so there you have it. That's how you would graph uh, a general angle in degrees. All right, have a great day.